Happy New Year, Dana. I know it's halfway two thirds through the month, but hoping you have a great year this year. How are you, buddy? Welcome back to Face. Hold on. You got me now? I got you now, buddy. All right. Yeah. Happy New Year. Thanks for having me back, Dale. Oh, no problem. And um, I, you know, sorry about the typo. Oh, I, on Twitter. <laughs> Huh? I, I, hey, I got a, I, got, I have a girl's name anyway, so it's just a different. Oh, no, Dana Andrews was a <laughs> man, and you know. Anyway, look, you know what? That, then we have that in common, okay? Because yeah. my name's Dale, yeah. and when I was a kid, everyone would go Dale Evans, Dale Evans. You know, that was Roy Rogers and his yep. wife Dale yep. Evans. Yep. Anyway, yep. so uh, you know, we, I'd, I'd overcompensate to be uh, masculine because of that. Anyway. Um, we'll get all the stuff. Huh? <laughs> What's that, Steve? <laughs> it didn't work. I just found. <laughs> I just found fun. Found that funny. <laughs> yeah. Uh, all right. So, Dana, you want to share your screen, green box, buddy? Yeah, you got it. All right. All right. So we are up. Okay. So, well, uh, you know, new year, um, same trend. Mm -hmm. Um looking at uh, the market, we had this little pullback. Uh, so far, that's all it was. Uh, yeah. I know a lot of guys are looking for about 38.50 in the S&Ps. I mean, they're even bigger bullish targets. Uh, but, you know, there is, now it's not just about buying the market. You really have to have more awareness of sectors than you had to have before. Didn't you, Dana? Don't you, Dana? Um. Yes and no. If you really want to outperform, yeah, but there's so many sectors that are working. I've never yeah. seen a better trade environment in my life. I mean, yeah. I, I've been at this game for, you know, a long time, two and a half decades and longer watching my father's career because he started, he started in 68, um, 69. And he says the same thing. He said, this is the, this is the best trading environment he's ever seen witness in his life. So you got to make uh, you got to make hay during this kind of environment because I, I mean what what more can you ask for? You've got a broad rally, you've got broad participation. You've got um, uh, as soon as something gets extended, something else pops up and gives you an opportunity to roll those profits into new sectors. You've got um, uh, uh, opportunities galore and lots of asset classes. Yeah, I, I mean, we, we've we've never we usually average maybe like ten or a dozen holdings at any time if we're long, uh, for short, obviously if we're, you know, defensive on the market, we might have no, no holdings, but if we're long, maybe we'll have a dozen. We've got like three times that. So, wow. and, and we've never traded this many, you know, other asset classes where we, I know you guys are big in the currencies. We're actually trading currencies, cryptocurrencies, you know, metals, bonds, uh, all kinds of stuff. So it's, uh, anywhere we can find opportunity, we're going to, uh, we're going to jump on. So, um, yeah, so that, do you find it, uh, do you have something mechanical Dana to, um, you know, take in and out of the market, uh, covering that, uh, being in that many different positions, uh, you know, as a discretionary trader without any kind of, uh, mechanical help would be overwhelming to me. Sure. How, sure. how do you guys do it? Yeah, so our we've got um, a top-down approach. So we have what they used to call a market timing model or uh, now active risk management, whatever you want to call it. So um, like I mentioned, my father started in the uh, late 60s. And if, if, uh, if for anyone who is familiar with that environment, obviously the next 15 years or so was a secular bear market. You saw sideways. You saw it, it was sideways. You look at the chart and say, oh, okay, it went sideways. But those were big moves. Those were, you know, 50% drops and then 100% rally. And then you repeated the cycle. So um, yeah, what was that range, Dana? About 600 to 1,000 in the Dow for all those years? Something correct, like that. Correct. Yeah. Something on that order. Okay. Uh, so, you know, working for uh Merrill Lynch like he did obviously they were no help in actively man helping him actively manage his clients money so he came up with uh, uh a risk management uh, or a, a risk assessment model which uh, a lot of the components we use today but a lot of it uh revolves around breath so what they say is um 70 to 80 percent of the direction of a stock is 
because of the direction of the overall market. So we want to be aligned with the direction of the overall market, the, the broad market of stocks. So for our first order business, the quantitative model that tells us which way the overall market is headed. And if it's headed up, uh, then we want to uh, be aggressively positioned like it is now. And we want to take advantage of these up moves when, when we get it. And when it turns south, then uh, we will uh, get uh, extremely defensive. We'll get all, go all cash sometimes. We'll go short sometimes. Uh, but the point is, if the, if the overall market is headed lower, you want to be uh, uh, protective of capital in those environments. So that is our main overriding uh, model. And it's based, again, uh, uh, first and foremost, we're equity managers. So it's mostly, it, it is, is, it's derived completely from inputs uh, from the equity market itself. And from there, the second prong of our investment approach is where are we going to invest, right? So if you're long in the market, if, you, if, you're, if the risk is conducive to be aggressively long, then where do you want to invest? And we uh, espouse a relative strength approach. So we don't want to just spread out uh, among all the sectors because you know, going, you're going to dilute your performance because some things are going to be working, some things are going to not be working. Uh, but we like to concentrate our uh, holdings in those areas that are working, which makes this environment, like, uh, like we mentioned at the beginning, uh, uh, very unique because there are so many areas that are working. So uh, if we can diversify um, among you know, a lot of high relative strength areas, that's best case scenario like it has been you know, for the last uh, couple of months. So uh, that okay. is basically the, uh, the crux of our investment approach. Yeah, so you have some FIB extensions uh, up there. Yeah, and, yeah. yeah. So, um, well, then, I, uh, t yeah, I'm going to go back. Last time we talked, I think it was election day, right? Um, so we had at the time, we had, you know, our model was uh, wavering in September. We had that mini correction. Yeah. But the, the beginning of October, we had a resurgence in breath and the uh, number of areas participating. So here's the mid-cap pure growth index, our ETF. RFG is the uh, ETF ticker symbol. So at the time, we had a breakout. And this is this is representative of a lot of things at the time we had the breakout of, uh, above the, the several years high, pulled back right out of right at election day or a couple of days before, came back, tested um, that breakout point, and which we talked about at the time. We said, what if this is just a test of that breakout point and we jump higher from here, which you know right. is, it couldn't have unfolded better. Now we're hitting, you know. In, in many of our holdings that we bought around that time a couple of months ago, we're hitting, say, the 161 extension now. So we take profits in these areas, look for other opportunities. You know, you don't have to sell the whole thing, but look for other areas to roll in. And it was the same thing with the Russell 2000 growth. That was amazing. Um, yeah. Same thing. Yeah. You had a yeah. couple, uh, you had two years of uh, similar highs. Broke out, came back down right uh, just before election day, tested that breakout, and then straight up from there. So um, now we're seeing uh, a whole bunch of other areas starting to step up. You've, you yeah. know, I, I read a stat that um, penny stock volume yeah. has a completely exploded to unprecedented levels. And we know that most of that's junk, right? Oh, yeah. We don't, you know, bulletin board, pink sheet, uh, stuff like that. But, you know, the little investor, the Robin Hood, I mean, they could come in and buy a thousand, two thousand shares. They can't do that with fangs. Um, right. Are there any signs, Dana, that are saying that, I mean, isn't that a sign that things are a bit overdone when you're getting this kind of volume in, you know, dash to trash? Def definitely. And that is one thing that's probably the biggest red flag right now in the market is uh, investor so sentiment has gotten, yeah. gotten way overheated. But you could say that you could have said that for the last four to six weeks. How about so, the last 10 years? Ten. Well, I mean, you know, yeah, I mean, that's ways, what I was saying. <laughs> yeah. Those those background, uh, what we call them background indicators, they're long term uh, signals like uh, valuation, like the uh, level of household investment. And those have been like at warning levels for, you know, for a long time, we call them the secular cycle. So though they reached all time records in 2000, 
And this is one reason we've talked about this, uh, why we don't think we're off to the races for, uh, on a long-term sustainable basis, because we, we had the secular top in 2000. And historically, you've always gone to extremes to the downside before you reset and start a new sustainable secular bull market. And oh, that still applies, the, even though we had that crash in March? No, I, I, I think it does apply. And uh, what we, because we, we never saw those metrics uh, uh, correct to extremes on the downside, like we saw to the upside. You know, we saw um, maybe during the financial crisis, we thought, saw things maybe correct down to the long term mean. And then you had the, the unprecedented central bank interventions right. that prevented right. natural correction uh, in many of those metrics, economic and, and market wise, you saw uh, you didn't get that correction down to that long term um, uh, oversold levels like you always have historically. So um, that's still to come. And not only do you have some of those uh, uh, excesses still uh, built up into the system, like you had uh, in 2000, but now you have even more excesses that have been built up, obviously, with that intervention since uh, 2009. So you've got, you've got uh, uh, obviously, uh, uh, prices to be paid um, since going back to 2000 and then since that 2009 uh, financial crisis. So we don't think as, as great as this bull market has been, we don't think it's a sustainable one that keeps going. You're going to have a huge reset that takes those metrics down to uh, levels where you can, you know, launch a sustainable, organic, secular bull market. And uh, okay, we don't so think we're at that point, but in the, in, in the inter intermediate term, Things are yeah. great, and you have to take advantage of it. So, okay, um, that's 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 very interesting. So, yeah. you always have that in the background of your mind. And uh, sure. uh, what do you think? I mean, I, I know a lot of bull. There are some bulls that think that we could uh, stretch it into about twenty twenty three and some twenty twenty five. Do you think that this bull has? Uh, I know it's a very difficult question. Has years to run? Uh, you know, it, 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 that's a tough, yeah, that's a tough yeah. question. I would have yeah. said you could have asked me that, uh, over the last 10 years, I would say no, <laughs> probably yeah, not, see? but it, yeah. it, you know, it depends. It, it depends on, uh, the intermediate term, you know, we our, our models designed to capture the intermediate term, which is like two to six months. So if it's yeah. doing well, we're going to have our clients money in there and, uh, trying to capture those those good times or else guess what? They're going to fire us and we're not going yeah. to have any assets. If we're saying, okay, there's going to be this big correction, maybe retrace 61%, which would take us down to these, you know, 2015, 16 lows, or maybe down to those tops from uh, 2000 and yeah, uh, 1500, 50. Yeah, yeah. Maybe it takes us down to there again, which uh, would kind of validate that secular bear market. Uh, thesis because this would not be a sustainable move. You still come back and test. Uh, but while we're waiting for that to happen, if we're jumping, you know, um, uh, close to whatever this uh, bull market's going to end, it could be uh, up, you know, 100% off of those March lows. We can't right. sit that out if we're uh, managing money. So no, I can't. could definitely see, you know, looking at that one extension yeah. you yeah. could definitely see up over 4100 4200 before this move is over especially okay. given you know again we'll go back to the what we um we place a, a lot of importance on the broad market the, the market breadth and we're seeing you know a, an extremely broad advance if i go to uh what we you know we call this probably the most important index is that value line geometric composite because it it um measures the median stock, the median, um, uh, basically the per, uh, performance of the median stock in the market. We've seen, uh, you know, a long sideways action, but that one is just yeah. now testing those highs from 2018. Could yeah. see some consolidation here, work off that, um, that excessive bullish sentiment and uh, maybe pull back for a little bit and then break out. If you look at, interesting enough, uh, obviously, the uh, arithmetic index, which measures the average 
performance is always a little bit ahead of the geometric. But you look at that. I mean, that exploded yeah. recently wow. after the uh, election. This is this is the average stock in the market. I mean, there is wow. nothing remotely bearish about this. Yeah, it's getting extended. Uh, but after a reset, a pullback, consolidation, whatever, uh, get people a little bit less bullish. There's no reason not to expect at least another extension of this rally. So okay. I think you'll have, if you missed out, a lot of people missed out on a lot of this rally that just recently come back. Um, if, if you're in that position, I would, I would be probably not chasing anything here. Wait for better. I think you get a better opportunity over the next uh, several weeks, months, whatever, okay. and then uh, get aggressive again for another, uh, another extension. Okay, Dana, you know, you keep bringing up the word reset, and uh, there's a lot of talk in uh, financial twid everywhere. Um, you know, the public's talking about the great reset. Mm -hmm. well, do you have a concept of what they're talking about, the great reset? Uh, you ever uh, look into what these people are thinking um, that could be? Uh, I have no idea what you're talking about. <laughs> I've seen yeah, the, all right. The fine, reset. Uh, you know, you yeah, know, I, I, yeah, I, I okay. talk about, yeah, I talk about this uh, COVID stuff being a great reset on uh, pretty much broader areas of our life. But as yeah, far as okay. financial wise, yeah. uh, I don't know. Um, but I will say um, as far as the near term, uh, given the sentiment uh, extremes and we're seeing, you know, um, we've seen. um uh, put the call may, levels yeah. and options yeah. data and other data that's been, you know, extremely bullish, um, overly bullish for about six weeks. Now we're seeing those go to even further levels. So I think we're yeah. seeing, you, you know, this has been such a great run. It's going to take you, it's going to take like extreme levels past those normal extreme levels to, uh, to, 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 to get that reset that I'm talking about in the short term and uh, kind of remove some of that bullishness that okay. uh, that's pent up kind of like we saw right before the election, people got nervous right. about the election or if there's a disputed election, what's going to happen. And that, that proved to be just like the perfect buying opportunity that you needed. So you need something like this. I don't know what the catalyst will be. They always figure out the catalyst after it. After yeah. Reporters will tell us. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. But that, yeah. uh, that uh, uh, that'll happen. It'll be a, probably a very good buying opportunity. Well, you know, uh, besides your bullish stance last time in equities, we were talking, you made a nice call on rates. Yeah. Uh, ten year finally broke out over that 1% level and mm -hmm. made a nice move. We're pulling back here a, a bit. Uh, what are you seeing here now, Dana? For rates? Yeah, you were all over this as well. Uh, so we had that consolidation. Our first target, uh, quote unquote target. I mean, we we take what the market gives us. We don't like to put necessarily targets, but that first uh, level in the ten year we were looking for was about 108. Yeah. Uh, get that we were above there a little. So I like this consolidation above here. The next target, the big target, would be about 150. We're looking okay. at on the ten year. So eventually, not you know, not a straight line. Eventually, looking for that. And on the 30 year, thir we're short the 30 year. So we took some profits at 185, consolidated around there. If you're looking for the next uh, uh, level um, on the 30 year, I'd be looking up around 245 eventually. And then as I, I think we've talked about it, there's about a 55 to 60 year cycle in interest rates, um, which topped obviously in the early 80s. It has been way overdue to bottom. Um, so they, whether you want to ascribe that, ascribe that to the central bank intervention, whatever, it's been way overdue. So uh, if we did, I would not be surprised if this March low was the bottom, the long-term bottom in rates, um, and we go up for years or decades to come. So obviously, again, not a straight, straight up move. But uh, if the uh, hundreds of years of uh, interest rate cycles are still valid, then that means we go up for uh, several decades. In yeah, those uh, levels we had in March, uh, I think uh, uh, we haven't seen since the Civil War. That's right. how extreme it was. So um, wh when do you think the, you, the market would feel pressure from rates? Uh, would we have to see 3% longer term? Maybe that's uh, the undoing eventually uh, would be 
you know, we're not going into negative interest rates. And the surprise would be that the Fed is not eventually affected at uh, right. yeah, what do you, you think know, they think about? I mean, really, yields doubled. What do you think they're thinking? Well, I'm thinking they're probably scared that, you know, they don't have control of the long end. That's 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 driven by yeah. the market as much as it's obviously they can have some influence on it. And they have for the last, you know, 10 years, the last decade or so. Um, but they don't have control over it. The market has control over that. And um, uh, at some point, yeah, say we break above that 150 level, um, uh, maybe in the tenure that starts putting pressure. I, I don't know. I don't know what point that yeah. is. Um, and normally the, the good thing about our, our system, our approach is it's all based on market data. I don't have to answer yeah. why it's Isn't fun, to, nice? it's fun yeah. to, to, to pontificate, You're right. and, uh, come up exactly. with narratives, but yeah. you know, who cares? I mean, why, why are rates going up and stocks are going up? Why, why was, um, you know, why do sometimes the yeah. dollar and gold moves the same direction? And, and yeah. it's not, you know, these, these relationships change. So I like to, we like to, basically we've got our overall models that we rely on and they're quantitative objective and they're smarter than we are. So we don't have to figure out why things are moving, but then those relationships change as well. That intermarket uh, analysis type stuff. So uh, yeah. sometimes things don't make sense, but you, you, you know, Prices don't lie, as they say, so we rely yeah. on that first and form foremost. Okay. Well, you know, something that has changed, and, uh, you know, people still don't believe it, and it took a lot to convince me, um, has been um, the move in oil and WTI. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think the shares have been lagging, but uh, the price of oil itself, but they've uh, kind of came to life the last couple months. In fact, I think one month, both the banks and the oils were uh, the strength of uh, the recent rally. Uh, and they were so out right. of favor and people are kind of scarred from seeing crude, a commodity trade at a negative number. Right. Uh, what are you seeing here, buddy? I'm seeing a long-term downtrend. Uh, but okay. again, we go back to the intermediate term and uh, this is, so this is a GSCI crude oil index. So I don't have to worry about, you know, rollovers and uh, adjustments and stuff. So this is what I track. Um, and recently, just over the last uh, maybe beginning of the year, broke out above some key uh, resistance. So long term, I'm bearish on uh, crude oil. But in the near term, broke out above uh, some resistance, opens up further upside. It's the same thing if you talk about the um, uh, CRB Banks. index or oh, okay. this is yeah. this is a, this is a uh, index we like the equal weight commodity index so it's not wow. all crude this one just jumped up above uh, some uh, key resistance as well so still long lo lower highs in the long term but in the near term opens up further upside and a lot of uh, a lot of that has to do also grains with, uh, grains exactly yeah. you nailed yeah. it uh, yeah. is the GSCI grain index jumped up yeah. above that long term trading range so that opens up uh, further upside. So yeah, we do see, you know, uh, in the inter intermediate term, see more upside in um, in grains and uh, some of the quantity stuff, and uh, even crude oil. Even though, even if we're more bearish in the long term, and that does play into what you're talking about, the equity um, uh, um, along the world bro. equities, yeah. And uh, oil stocks and whatnot, which look terrible in the long term, but in the uh, in the near term, intermediate term, uh, I think there's lots of upside there. Here's the uh, oil services um, right. uh, ETF OIH yeah. uh, moved to new highs recently, so I think there's room to go in um, in some of those uh, oil stocks uh, just on a mean reversion basis. So um, yeah, everything's working right <laughs> right yeah, now. Yeah, I mean, it's yeah. not yeah. A, a metals and we'll leave it uh, there any yeah uh, you know we've been in some type of a corrective stage in metals wondering what you're thinking here yep um we like metals in the long term so this is uh basically our read on the metals is what the gold had that gold and silver gold i'll touch on gold first gld we trade because we trade uh etfs so what did gld the long term uh we scroll out long term we had that huge rally into uh summer yeah. right yeah. ran right up to those 2011 highs 
Uh, basically, what we're seeing recently is, you know, consolidation, a little retracement, uh, a reset again, to use that word again, um, ahead of what we think is going to be a, another up leg, a breakout and another up leg. Um, recently, uh, as in Friday, broke down below some support. On GLD, I, I'd, I'd like to see it get back above that 173 if it's going to hold. If it doesn't, maybe we'll pull back to 165 again, maybe even down around 158 uh, for maybe an ideal entry point. And we're seeing the, the same thing, uh, a, a little bit different in silver, but uh, seeing the same near-term um, setup there. So we like silver also. Hopefully it holds around this area. Um, we'd like to see uh, we'd like to see that, but we see... Uh, big upside there and even the uh, gold and silver miners especially you look at uh, here's the silver uh junior miners ran into a, a oh, silj yeah silj yeah. uh yeah. broke some support recently but in the, in the grand scheme of things we see this as a nice consolidation above a breakout and the potential to uh run higher same thing with the uh, gold uh junior miners g g uh, gdxj yeah. this one uh approaching some resistance and um, okay. or, or, or some support areas. And if you look at one, um, one more thing, ahead. yeah. Um, I, I just have a V, uh, attendee question and we'll wrap it with that. Yeah. 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 Well, uh, just real quick G, uh, GDX. So, um, ran right up in last summer, right up to that 61 retracement from the 2011 high. So uh, a perfect spot to consolidate, uh, reset before the next up leg. So that's what we're okay. seeing. Uh, uh, aerial, uh, Harosh is interested in your view on nat gas. You have one? Yeah, nat gas. I mean, um, is there anything you don't cover? Uh, I, no, Diana. pretty much because we cover it every. Day. <laughs> 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 we cover we cover it every day for um, uh, subscribers on our um, on our all access uh, lion share. Uh, so I, I run through everything every day, all the key charts. So uh, nat gas we see in a uh, short term uh, pullback. Uh, we like it for maybe another run higher. So we had this, uh, we had this nice rally, uh, right. to, uh, right before the election pulling back here. Uh, so right this is a GSCI index again. So short term, it's in this little, uh, 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 trading range. If we break above this 50 day, I think we could get another up leg in the uh, net gas. Okay. Uh, thank you so much, Dane. How, you know, how do people get access to your work? That letter that you just, uh brought up right i hope that helped uh, ariel yeah I, yeah uh let me share uh let me share a different screen here um so we've got you know our our uh, uh main business is managing money of course right. so um let me share this screen so that's a discretionary basis we manage uh, uh assets for is that working am i sharing yeah. yeah, you're sharing. It's on okay. Zoom. So our main business managing money on a discretionary basis. Um, uh, but we also have uh, a couple other services. The Lion Share is a kind of a uh, trader, uh, premium trader uh, type letter where we give basically an all access look every day at what we are doing in our own management business. So what are we looking at to buy, sell, key charts? Uh, and this is a, on an everyday basis. So you, you can see what we're actually doing. You pull the strings yourself, but we, we give you basically an, uh, an inside lens to that. So that would be lionsharepro.com is the um, URL on that. But we also have, uh, you know, here, here are some other uh, resources. We have a uh, 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 service geared towards 401k investors called My 401k Pro, kind of a slower um, kind of service. So it's updated once a month for people that don't want to make that many changes or can't yeah. because of the uh, structure of their account. But uh, those are basically um, uh, what we offer on a, a service wise. And uh, of course you can follow us on Twitter, stock twits, yeah. uh, sign up for a uh, free email here. So just go to lionsharepro.com and you can find all these resources. So you're a, a, you're a, you're a talented pro Dana Lyons. <laughs> well, I appreciate it. Diana. Right. Uh, yeah, well, you know, that's a, another life. Uh, anyway, yeah. Yeah. Uh, thank you so much, my dream or your brother, for coming in and uh, sharing these ultra unbelievable long world views and everything. And also, you know, that you have your eye on 
you know, the other, you know, the other corner just in case yeah. and really yeah. uh, appreciate uh, your work. Much respect from me and um, our community. Thank you, Dana. I appreciate. Thanks for thanks for having me on again, Dale. And uh, it's always a pleasure. It's always fun talking to you. And happy New Year to you and all your followers. Okay, buddy. We'll get back together in the in April. How about that? Sounds great. All right, everyone. All right, take that's care, Dana, Dana. That's Dana Lyons, and uh, uh, you know, check them out. And uh, there's some different ways you could go, but you know, I've seen Dana for a while. Uh, I've been talking to him for years, and He's very good at what he does. So that's a wrap, everyone, for Turnaround Tuesday. And we'll see everyone. His Twitter is right there in front of you, J Lions Fund Management, Bruno. Okay. You're welcome, everyone. Don't just count your pips. Count your blessings. See you tomorrow. Adios.